Burr. It may be spring, but in my heart, it's winter. Uh, or should I say winter soldier? <laughs> <laughs> that might be my weakest opening ever. I don't care. I'm Andrew Fantasia. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? My name is Ryan J. Whitehead. I will say, though, in uh, to... to uh to assist you here your morning text was probably the most clever and and probably the best way to get the day started of like yeah we need to watch falcon and winter soldier uh and one doth quote uh <laughs> i already love where this is going uh hold on hold on oh, gotta scroll through all of our messages da, 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 da. Uh, you're like, good morrow, Lord Ryan of House Whitehead, upon which hour wouldst thou participate in thy adventures of the flag warrior and his knight at arms? That, my friend, is an intro uh, to, to getting our day started. Um, uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I had fun sending that. I've, I've been in a Shakespearean mood since I heard the news about those adventure, Avengers Shakespeare books. Uh, I reread the Mean Girls one to prep myself, to prep my body and soul. Mm -hmm. uh, and who knows, maybe Loki will be entirely done in iambic pentameter. We don't know. We don't know. We don't. But I. But we're looking forward to it. I mean, you know, the winged warrior in the night at arms. Oh, my God. Just brilliant. Brilliance, I tell you. All right, man. But let me tell you, this episode, I mean, we're just in it for the ride at this point. Like, this is a roller coaster, and it's one of those roller coasters. You know what you're getting into. You see the name on the front here. Like, um, like for example, like when we used to have Top Gun. Yes, when, I, when we used to call it Top Gun, not this flight <laughs> deck nonsense. We all know what it is. We know what it is, and we know what we're getting into. We're getting into a ride. And that Are you talking about is, the roller coaster? Yeah, I'm talking about the roller coaster. Wait, it's not called Top Gun anymore? N no, bro. You haven't been in a while then. No, it's called Flight no. Deck now. And they don't even have, they don't even play the uh, the highway to the danger zone. Boo. Uh, it must be because they lost, maybe it's not Paramount that owns it anymore. We, we have a park here for all you American listeners. We have a park here uh, called Canada's Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with Alice or the Caterpillar. It's it's literally just a theme park. And it used to be owned by Paramount. It used to be called Paramount Canada's Wonderland. So there was a, a coaster named after Top Gun. And it's weird. That was like the only movie ride that I can think of. Like, that's it. Yeah. Right? There was no Indiana Jones ride. There was nothing. Else. That's so strange. You think there'd be like a Transformers ride. But do you remember before it used to be owned by Hanna-Barbera and there was like a Flintstone village? That's what I remember when I was a kid. And you could go eat and fresh Flintstone. Yeah. No, no, I you totally sit. don't. I think I still have a picture of myself. You can sit in Fred Flintstone's car and eat like $200 oh fries from their shake stand or whatever. From their food trap. Yeah, their food mind. trap. That's exactly the right word for it. Like you spend $80 <laughs> to get in and then you spend another $100 just to eat there. Like and it's snack. Like it's brutal. Ugh. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. But my point is is like you go on to the ride, you know you're going into Top Gun, you line up in Top Gun, you get on the ride and it feels like Top Gun. And that's what this show is giving you right then and there is you're going in for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you're you're expecting Falcon and the Winter Soldier and that's what you get. And it's so good. There's so much to, there's, there's fun things to point out in this show. Like there's no like real secrets that we have to like super scrounge at <laughs> and just burrow at. It's it's just face value and it's perfect. It's just giving you everything. Starting with going to see Mr. Officially Named Baron Zemo. They dropped the Baron title right out of the gate and I couldn't have been happier. I would have been really upset if he had turned out to be an Archduke. I'm glad he's a Baron because <laughs> that's what he's supposed to be. Um, but there, there are plenty of secrets though. You didn't hear there's 666 hidden M's uh, from Mephisto because he's if you watch carefully you have to freeze frame but he's there you mm -hmm. just have to find all the M's and once you do you highlight them with your controller and he appears and he tells if, you the plot of Avengers 6 if only that were true if <laughs> only that were even remotely true and it's funny because you keep dropping like Mephisto confirmed which is hilarious like that's 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 the running gag with you now and I love it yeah. um, but uh, I actually had a Mephisto confirmed moment during this uh, just before this podcast uh, and and video that we're recording I think we're recording are we doing both I can't even remember yeah we're doing video and audio mm -hmm. so they see our handsome faces as well okay. as hear our dulcet Tones. covid haircut oh it's great Ooh, i just 
I, I cut my own hair on the last weekend. That's why it's Ooh. all patchy and weird. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. But see, you tried something. Like, this is this is after post-shaved head, and, like, now my hair is my hair is growing back, but it's shaping my head all weird. It's bizarre. But my point is, my point is, is that, um, oh, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, Mephisto confirmed moment. So, on YouTube, I was perusing, and one of my sites that provide me with sources and news uh, dropped a pretty big one, but I don't know if it's true. And it's, it's this site's, I think they're right about almost half the time, almost half the time. But they said that the talks are in and negotiations are finishing that Henry Cavill is going to be Wolverine. No way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mephisto confirmed. <laughs> Mephisto confirmed. Because we all know where there's Wolverine, there's Mephisto. They go hand yeah. in hand. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. And I, like, I was just thinking about how he was, in my opinion, the best on screen Superman. And he never really got the chance to continue. So I'm glad, you know, if there is no more of him as Superman, then I hope he gets something like Wolverine because he, he's good. He's good. He's, he's a charismatic dude. I love how you say that. He's just, he's good. He's yeah. good. And uh, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And when you look at, when you look at DC movies, if I'm a DC actor right now, if Marvel gave me an invite to be in the MCU, wouldn't even hesitate. I'm sorry, DC. Oh. I'm sorry. I would have done my run and I would have been happy with it. But if I got that invite and DC was like, yeah, you know, we're not sure what we're going to do with your character. Marvel knows what they're going to do with their characters. I'm sorry. I watched the Justice League. Yeah, it fixes the first one. And it, there's some okay moments, but I'm sorry. No, you still don't know what you're doing with the characters yet. So I, I'm taking that invite from Kevin Feige. We're going to go have dinner. It's probably going to be a $300 steak. Unless he's vegetarian, <laughs> then I'll join him in a vegetarian meal. But my point is, um, yeah, it, it Marvel invited me. I'd take it in a heartbeat. So, and here's the thing. I When I looked at uh, Wyatt being cast as uh, as the U.S. agent, I already can see what performance they use that would convince them to be like, you know what, we should get him as John Walker. Because if you watch the movie Overlord, it's a similar character in terms of intensity and in terms of in terms of structure, because Overlord is about U.S. soldiers going into this final Nazi base and they discover like this zombie formula. But you see him go from like, this U.S. soldier that people aren't quite trustworthy of yet, like they don't like him. And then he tries to be like this nice guy through his actions, like, hey, like I'm going to lead you guys to victory kind of thing. And in the end, he does something crazy and he becomes like, he actually becomes crazy aggressive. And I think we're already seeing that in this show. So with this casting, love how I'm all tying this all back together. It's nice neat little bow. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, but I could tell you right now, if this is true, if this is true, they're going to, it's kind of, he's going to kind of build his voice and his, his, uh, his approach to it similar to the Witcher because he has that low gritty voice. Um, and on top of that, when, when push comes to shove, he's like just a force of nature and who better to, I mean, who better to draw inspiration from than Henry Cavill, who performed that very performance in The Witcher and bring that over to Wolverine. I think it's perfect. Yeah, and I just hope he he makes his Logan, again, if he does get this, I hope he makes Logan mm. like more likable and vulnerable than The Witcher. Because The Witcher is kind of an a-hole. I've never mm-hmm. really been a fan of that character. He's even worse in the games. In the games, he's just like, I'm not human. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, 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 I think... I want to see even more of the man underneath the the toughness. Exactly. Uh, but it's it's like Kevin Feige rolled up to Henry Cavill and was like, "Hey, buddy, I know you're uh, I know you're lounging there on the deck of the Titanic, but do you want to come in my unsinkable submarine instead?" <laughs> yes. The fact that I got you to say that. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Then you Look, agree. I, you agree. I love- I love to pieces Zack Snyder's Justice League, but they are wasting Cavill. Like Warner Brothers is they in this situation. Mm -hmm. They are wasting Cavill. They are completely wasting Ray Fisher, who was the heart and soul of that movie, both versions of that movie. They, They drove Ben Affleck away with how awful the process was. It's like, what are you doing? And now they're canceling the New Gods movie. That would have 
introduce Jack Kirby's fourth world. It's like, oh my God, like make a plan. Make <laughs> a plan. Um, pick pick one story and then <laughs> build it. And then when that story is about to finish, then start your next one. But don't just throw it all in and expect the suitcase to close and zip. It's not going to get in the plane. It's not going to get in the plane and just take off. It's not going to happen. And then not only do they do they throw the clothes in and try to like shut the suitcase, but when the suitcase won't shut, they blame the sweater that's sticking out. Like, it's your fault. <laughs> and then the worst part is when you get to the airport and then it doesn't get through the security, you got to open the bag. You got to unpack everything. And then because they got to look through it all. And then when they're done, they tell you, hey, you got to pack it all back together. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants to deal with that. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, I'm begging. I'm begging DC fans, and I have one. I have one D- big DC fan, um, and I, I would say it's you, but it, you're you're a fan, but not the fan I'm looking for. The the right. one fan I am looking for is my buddy Rav. My buddy Rav bleeds DC, and he he admits that DC movies got some work, but he praised the Justice League movie. So I'm curious to see what he's got to say that's going to convince me. I I it's going to take a lot, man. Marvel's too good, right? Marvel's too good. And DC made a good Justice League movie, but if we're talking a DCEU movie, it's it's not there. It's it's not where it needs to be. I'm way too confused, and there's too much going on. Yeah, and I don't think they should even, like, the idea that Marvel's too good, it shouldn't even be on DC's radar. Like, don't worry about Marvel. Pretend Marvel doesn't even exist and just do your own thing. Yes. Um, Because I I think that story that Snyder was trying to tell and would have told over, you know, more movies if he had the chance would have been one of my favorite superhero stories that has ever been told, period. Mm -hmm. And they didn't give him that chance because they were afraid. And now they're canceling other things because they're afraid and they're not doing other things because they're afraid. And it's just like, grow a pair, grow a pair. Do your job. Let artists be artists. Let's do a Justice League movie. (laughs) Uh, How how about in this one? Aquaman, he's on land the whole movie. Let's let's make one where he's on your water. And then I I know we had had a movie with the new guys. It was fun. But instead of that, that, we're going to make a movie about Blue Beetle's uncle. That's what people want to see. Guys, why? I make eight hundred thousand dollars a year, and like and, it, and Snyder, man, if you watch this, because um, we we now have this plethora of directors that watch this podcast, it's yes, not your do. fault. It's not your fault. You are yeah. a great storyteller. You have a great eye for for pointing the camera and giving us a scene. What's the problem here? I think my brother said it best. I think it's the writer. That writer, is, I think he's a bit too ambitious, and he's a bit he's a bit green behind the wheel. You know, he's he's not he doesn't have that experience yet, and it's too. Are you much. talking about the Justice League writer? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what else he wrote? What? <laughs> the Rise of Skywalker. Yep. Yeah, I think there that's fair. That right? I think that's yeah. fair. I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, uh, well, at least he didn't write The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. No, no, he didn't. He did not write that. Let's, yeah, uh, let's bring he, it back. Let's bring it back in here. We've, we've had our, we've vented. We vented. I hope you feel better. <laughs> I feel better. But we vented. Let's get back into it because let's talk about the Zemo scene. So first of all, I love what they're doing with Zemo. They're already establishing Zemo's history without even spelling it out for us. They literally said, look, he's a baron. And then he goes into this like, this warehouse and he's covered with all these cars, these beautiful cars. And we also get the modern adaptation of the Zemo outfit, which I love, by the way, the purple shirt, the black trench coat with the white fur, and then the purple mask. Perfect. Perfect. It looked stupendous. That car, man, that just broke my heart. I want that car. And he, right now he feels more than ever like a bond villain mm-hmm. like he's he's got the cool outfit he's got the the car and the the he's 
very wealthy. Bond villains are never hurting for cash. Uh, and, you know, he's he's vaguely foreign because Bond villains like to do that too, unfortunately. So they they really are painting this picture of this like cool Bond villain. And now to top it all off, I don't know about you, but I was definitely not expecting him to be along for the ride as part of the crew. This you know, is like yeah. some X-Men to put Magneto on the Blackbird and let's go to Canada kind of shit. Like I was not mm-hmm. expecting this at all. Mephisto confirmed. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because where they're going, uh, Magneto does have a small role to play in that in Mandapore, but we're probably not going to see it because that's pretty big storytelling. Mm-hmm. Again, that's that's Justice League approach if they do it. Like that's that's what that is. But I but I I agree with you. I mean, you know, Mephisto confirmed in the sense that what I love is that when they talked about Civil War, the one thing they talked about in terms of why Falcon and Winter Soldier's relationship was so great was it was because two it was about two friends who are fighting over who's the better friend to Captain America. And you know, as kids, we all do that. Like we kids when we find <laughs> this one friend um, that we get that, you know, a third friend comes into the the fray, you, it becomes that relationship of like, of like, who's the better friend, right? Yeah. Unnaturally, like it doesn't happen forcefully, it happens subconsciously. It's just, you know, like, oh, I'm a better friend because I do this, right? And what's, so I love that kind of triangular relationship. And I think that they've expanded that even further because now you have a fourth member coming into this friendship, technically of, of knowing Captain America with Zemo and he gets it. Like he just gets it. And then, and then starts to break the two up in a funny way. And, and it like, cause he's kind of like the bully character, but it works. It's they're still playing. They're still playing this playground friendship mentality. And it's so funny and it, I was laughing so much. And and again, you just get so excited for the ride. And now they're going to Mandrapore, Mandrapore. And Mandrapore, and you're going to love this re- reference, it's like uh, most Eisley Space Station. It's, uh, you'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. And that's... Oh, that, that was so good. That was so good. <laughs> say, some, say something else is Obi-Wan. <laughs> you don't need... Oh, sorry. Oh, I got Russian there. Uh, oh, hello there. Um, um. <laughs> but uh but yeah no but it's uh but that's what it is it's 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 this place where all the villains get together and like hang out of bars and scheme and plan and all this stuff in fact magneto once made an x mansion in mandrapur once and uh Ooh. obviously that didn't go well but uh but it's a place for the for the very rich and the very poor of the crime world where uh, Falcon actually gets called out to pretend to be an actual character from the Marvel comics. He's a gangsta. Um, but uh, yeah, the Smiling Tiger is a real character. <laughs> the Smiling Tiger, and he's a sharp-dressed man, too. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I'm so glad you brought up the Mos Eisley reference because um, have I ever told you who my favorite batman character is your favorite it's isn't it the riddler it's gotta be he's, he's my favorite batman villain oh I ever told you, my favorite character oh. is gotham city because it is limitless you can do anything with god it's not new york whatever you know you're not tied down to a place that exists mm-hmm. and what i love about dc is all of its stories are set in places like that you know, Flash has has Coast City. What like there's all these places where it's just like this could be anything. Mm-hmm. Um, then Marvel has always been very grounded in like this is New York, this is Washington, and then along comes friggin' Mandrapur, which is as far as I know not a real place. And then uh, we we get here, and there's this just beautiful, colorful underworld going on. That bar was straight out of Mos Eisley. Everywhere I look, I'm like, who's that guy? Who's that? And just with them rolling into the city for the first time in Zemo's car and you've got those guys on the motorcycles with their little samurai flags on the back of their motorcycles. I was like, this is my favorite image in all of the MCU. Like Mm -hmm. more, more, please. All of this. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. It's the, yeah, it's the city where it's like, we don't know what that tower is called. We don't know what how big this place is. We don't know who does what where. It's limitless. I wish everything was set in Mandrapur from now on. 
I, I couldn't agree more. Um, Mandrapur in the comics has such a big history uh, and there's so many events that take place. So I, I love how you pitch that, that it's a character because it is. Um, the hand operate out of there. I'm sure the silver samurai has been around a few times. Um, on top of that, mutants galore. I know from what I've seen in terms of the production, we are supposed to see a mutant at some point in the show. Um, I will I will say who it is when it happens. I thought we were going to see it here, but we weren't um, because um, Baron Zemo has a girlfriend and and also it has a girl he loves and uh, she's a mutant. But I from from rumors, rumors and set photos, we haven't seen this person yet, but I think it's her. It's a possibility. Again, I could be far off. It could be just a random person we see in a shot. We don't know. Um, but yeah, that's 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 where that's why I texted you. I'm like, oh, I think we're gonna see a mutant. And I thought Sybil was was that person, but it's not. We did see a hooded figure put the hood up, but I'm pretty sure that was that was Agent 13. Yeah, that was Sharon. Mm. Um, yeah, the mutant's probably gonna be somebody who it's like I would I feel like it's gonna be somebody I wouldn't know. Like mm. it'll be that dude from X-Men 3 who hugs people and then spikes come out of his face. So it'll be somebody like that. <laughs> love that guy. Somebody... Oh my God. I love that. I do love that actor though. Um, but yeah, love that. Oh guy. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ken Lunga, I think he's great. Mm -hmm. um, oh, by the way, uh, there's uh, did you see the, um, the Shang-Chi action figures? Uh, I did. Those were released today. Mm -hmm. Mandarin's looking snazzy. And there's that person called the, uh, oh, what's his name? He's got a mask. The, the Death mask. The death, death dealer. Yeah, Death something. Dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he looks mm -hmm. neat. Yeah, very taskmaster-y. Um, yeah, Mandrapur, man. Uh, set more things there. Set more things. Set everything there. I want it. I want to see, like, I'm actually, I want to see, like, you know, when the hench, when when we move a little further down the story, when the henchmen started coming, I was hoping we might see, like, a random hand ninja, like, or a guy that wears, like, maybe, like, a red gi, but doesn't wear, like, the, the ninja mask, but, like, you know, like kind of create the question. But again, that's again, it's ambitious because you got like one thing that Marvel is doing, which is which is the obviously the the super opposite. They have a very specific narrative. And if if a character doesn't fit the narrative, then it's not going to make it in there. Um, yeah. And and the same goes with the whole with the whole running gag of Mephisto confirmed because I think that if Mephisto was dropped, it would take away from the narrative of the story they were trying to tell, which is about about Wanda becoming Scarlet Witch and and being and be and 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 embracing who she is as well as dealing with her problems. Um, so yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, the Marvel kid in me is like, give me more. I would love to see a hand guy and then silver samurai comes in, then Wolverine comes in and then like, boom, like, yeah, I would love to see, you know, a, a superhero, a superhero Royal rumble of characters, but we're not going to get, we're not going to get that right now. It's just too much too soon. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I loved seeing the CD underground. I want I hope we're going to see more history with Mandrapur. Uh, they can do it. Um, for sure. And so we get to see Sybil. I'm not sure if I, I'm Sybil might be a character. I'm not, I couldn't find in my research right away that, 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 that was an actual character, but, um, but I was excited to see that they, they did give nod to Falcon being like this, this low level gang member in the comics. Um, and so I love that they're off to the start. And then, and then uh, I love that the deal goes wrong. I actually thought they were going to take her along for the ride, in my opinion. Um, and uh, I love that they were going to take her for the ride, but then the deal does go south. Um, and uh, we get to the reveal of Agent Carter, and she lives in this gorgeous place. But it's is it the club or is it her mansion? I thought it was her like mansion that also acts as a club. Like it was just a massive house party. It looked like, yeah, like a room in an old school mansion. Like the windows were very, it could have been a swanky hotel room. Yeah, true. Um, it could have been. Like it was very, very clean though, very nice. It was, I, I find the Captain America um, movies have been really good with neat looking locations. Because mm -hmm. um, Marvel likes to set a lot of stuff in just like, and I, I see this a lot, even in that in the new video game that came out, where it's like every time I watch footage of it, it's like they're in a facility, and it's just like 
random metal walls and like it looks so boring and drab. Mm-hmm. The Captain America stuff has been really good with giving us cool locations that look like they have life to it, not just like here's another lab. Um, so I, I liked how mm. that looked. And again, I love that bar. Did you watch this episode with Isabella? I did. Did she freak out when the, the snake got killed? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, although the humor, I, I'd say one thing they're doing right with the comedic writing and as well as the comedic performances um, is consistency. Uh, the, the joke of consistency is there. It's so funny. Like, like i'm i'm sorry man uh anthony mackie is just too funny i've been watching some like interviews and stuff and he is his comedic timing is something you can't teach and uh um i will say though it is a little inspired by will smith there's just certain mannerisms and actions just feel kind of aligned with uh with fresh prince but he but he is very much his own person and he he's very much doing his, his his comedy um but uh i love the drink the shot and he's just like yep love it and he just like yep love it. Like, he's just it's so good um but yeah no isabella was a little sad but is i will say isabella is is definitely a fan of this marvel cinematic universe not from the comic book world just coming from the movies but she she's coming in from this perspective of like just this fresh perspective and she's loving the show she just thinks it's it's so well paced but like I said, like everything's mostly at face value. I think that if they're going to reveal something that's kind of uh, like kind of like with WandaVision where it's like the Dark Hold book or something, we haven't seen it yet. I think it's been mostly focused on the serum um, and we get to see the crazy scientist on the, the docks, which was really cool. Great fight scene. Great suspense. Interesting enough, the scientist talks about, he's like, oh, yes, he's like, I am a god. And he's like, I've made the serum better. Like, and he talks about, and this is a perfect example of the evolution of Marvel storytelling is that, yeah, like, you know, people are trying to recreate this serum. And this guy now has figured it out and he doesn't require all this stuff. He literally requires people just to drink his serum and that's it. And we also get the nod to Isaiah Bradley's history, which he was in uh, was imprisoned by uh, was imprisoned by uh, essentially Hydra, if you want to break it down that way. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, he was tested on for thirty years. Thirty years, Jeez. they kept taking his blood samples and everything. So they threw no that. No wonder in the there. poor guy was paranoid. He has every right to be feeling the yeah. way he feels. Um, but yeah, 30 years. And then I love that they in, I love that we're seeing the Marvel language continue with the blip uh, because they did talk he did talk about why because again, the first question you'd ask about the scientist is like, okay, well, you know, what happened? Like, where have you been this whole time kind of thing? And he's like, well, I blipped and my project stopped. But now these power brokers come in. Now, the interesting thing about the power brokers is we really haven't seen who they are yet. Um right. Or uh, as right now, I think the conspiracy here is is that that I think that Agent Thirteen actually might be might be working for him. If you ask me. Ooh, yeah, that's true. There's, as a double agent, as a double agent, double. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She she was up to some, some shady business, like with that mm-hmm. person, uh, that lady. She's like, hey, we got a problem, uh, and they, I, I was a bit confused because from what you taught me last week, I was under the assumption the power brokers were a group. And then in this episode, they talked about a power broker as like an individual who's sort Mm -hmm. of like lording over Mandapore. And I started thinking like, all right, who it it, could this be somebody we know, whatever. And there was even some graffiti on a wall that said the power broker is watching. Um, And it specifically said like power broker, singular, not plural. So my mind was like, well, okay, like, could it be, you know, who, who could, who could be a person that could fill that role if there is an individual leader. And I was like, what if it's like Arnim Zola who's watching through like cameras and stuff and, you know, wanting to continue the serum and all that. Yeah. You're liking this. You're liking this. Give me more, man. Just give it, give me more. I would love for it to be Zola. I would love to see that Zola survived. Um, But I mean, at the same time, what if Zemo is? Ooh, yeah, that's, that's very true. He's just, He's the ultimate incognito. He's like pretending to be part of the group. Um, and I mean, mm-hmm. we've seen in the past, Zemo's all about uh, pulling a lot of strings. So, well, because like, I, I, the way I see it is like, what if, 
And and actually, uh, my my friend, uh, or well, my fiance's friend, best friend, Anna, my friend as well. Uh, Anna, she brought up a good theory that she thinks that um, John Walker is a, is the power broker. But I think she's I think she's right in the sense that he may be working for them. But I think Zemo is the power broker, uh, and he's trying to get trying to get a control again of of what's been going on. But it's but the only reason why I doubt it is because he doesn't believe that the world should have superheroes. Like he doesn't right. like that speech he does on the plane is is amazing. Like you put them on a pedestal and then you know you watch them turn and and yeah and I mean that's that's the interesting side of it. So I don't know. I don't think it's in him, but to be fair, he was he knew exactly where the um, the Winter Soldier program was, so I I wouldn't be surprised if 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 he ends up being like, oh yeah, I'm the power broker. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like there shouldn't I shouldn't there shouldn't be super soldiers unless I control them, like that kind like like that kind of evil. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that way, like you know. You know, because I think maybe he relates to Cap in the sense of like the best hands are still our own. So like maybe he feels he can better manage what's going on. Maybe. I yeah, I I think that this power broker thing just became more and more interesting. Cause I was I was totally cool with, with that concept last week where it was like just a bunch of shady dudes. Definitely Mr. Beardman from the Smithsonian Museum was in mm-hmm. on it. I still think he is. But now this idea that it could be like a big brother kind of figure. That's pretty scary too. And to have the reach all over the world because Mandrapore seemed to really be under this power broker's thumb. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then with us agent too, I, um, I get the feel like he's really starting to remind me of nuke from the Jessica Jones show. Like, yes, I, I could be wrong. It could be just my brain, you know, like seeing what I wanted to see. But at the beginning when he kind of freaked out and he was getting upset and battle stars like, Hey, Hey, chill. They they had like a profile shot of of U.S. Agent, and I thought I saw like some kind of sickly looking vein kind of thing on his face. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I I feel like that serum is something's disagreeing with him, uh, and uh, he's not going to maintain his sanity for much longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like his role in this is I when when Anna said he he might be the power broker, I think he's a product of the power brokers. I very mm-hmm. much feel like that's the story. Is that the, the, obviously the government's not going to admit it, and neither is he. But I think he he's clearly a product of the power brokers. But yeah, I mean, hundred percent, man. I, yeah, I, I I feel like he he either. I think either he's taken the serum or he's a product of the serum being unstable and and he was like a test subject that didn't didn't get the right serum, that kind of thing. You know what they might do? Give it to me, buddy. Give me that writing experience. Oh, because I know Marvel's really good at like taking what we're familiar with from the books, but twisting it in a little way. What you know, you you mentioned about how Sharon could possibly be a double agent, you know, like working with the power broker, but not really kind of thing. What if she's hypnotized like she was in the comic when they tried, when they got her to assassinate Cap? What if it's that kind of situation where she is working for them, but against her own will? Ooh, that's really good. Oh, that's, ooh, buddy. Explains how she pays for that swanky room too that she was hiding out in. Mephisto confirmed. Mephisto confirmed. He's the only one who can do that. Hypnotize <laughs> folks. That makes a lot of sense. And it also plays on the narrative because when we first see Bucky with Zemo, he does the, the mind control speech. Yes, he does. And if it's all if this is all like some kind of setup, you know, if if I'm one of these power brokers, whatever, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to create this new Captain America, whatever, and prop him up in front of the world. And then I'm going to get this agent to assassinate him publicly to further my own goals somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know what those are, but. The, you know, I think this, this, this is worth further investigation. And on top of that, Mm -hmm. I will also argue that I think this is, this merits, this merits, uh, 
the idea that maybe this merits an idea that we should follow for now because what I like is Sam does say because she's like you know Captain America's a joke right like like the whole thing's a joke she and Sam does say like who is this person mm-hmm. yes so yeah. so she is different and we don't know why so that's uh you might have just answered that no, question maybe and they did stress a few times in this episode that bucky's uh you know that hypnosis doesn't work on him anymore mm-hmm. like they stressed it a couple times like yeah that's not me anymore um you can say boxcar all you want i'm not going to do your bidding yeah and mm-hmm. and the show does talk about uh how bucky's story originally like in the first i think it was the first or second episode um the first or second episode they talk about how you're not the winter soldier anymore so mm. does that does that mean that that she's the new one it could very well mean that not in the sense of like yeah. it, they're gonna put her in cryo and all that stuff but she's a brainwashed soldier exactly exactly she's filling the new role i like this i like where this is going i like where this theory is going i mean this like I said, guys, like at this point, there's not much to speculate on. The Flag Smasher story is going really well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're seeing more of the, you know, more about their story. And the, and and Carly, the actress is doing an incredible job. She's she's just oh, amazing. She's great. Amazing. Um, but again, like most of the things are face value here, guys. I haven't seen anything like really Easter eggy or anything like that. Although I will say that, you know, because we're, we're, we're already getting to the end of the plot here for this episode. Uh, I was so glad I picked up on the Wakanda beads pretty quickly. Like, yeah, oh, man. At first, I was like, what is that? And then I noticed the symbol, the symbol on it. And I was like, oh, man. I'm like, and my brain immediately, like, sifted through a thousand Marvel images of the <laughs> movies in my head. And I'm like, what could be remotely close to that? And I was like, Wakanda beads. So, um, yeah, uh, it's it's. I love this inclusion. Like this, this is great narrative. And, um, and again, this is where the narrative works in, in adding in this character because Bucky's story is well tied into Wakanda as he demonstrated by saying that he was the white wolf, but also that he was in Wakanda for a long time. Right. So, mm-hmm. so it's nice to see that the, the Wakandans have uh, a role to play and that they're looking for Zemo. That was interesting too. Yes. And I'm, you texted me and said like, I think those are Wakanda beads. And I'm glad you did because I'm looking at them too. And I'm like, what the hell is he holding? There's yeah. just these little, little black balls of something. And they're like whistling. Yeah. And then if, if you hadn't sent me that message and said Wakanda beads, and then I would have like, I would have just been completely in the dark. And then when this Dora Milaje woman shows up, I would have been like, huh? Uh, so the fact that you told me that it helped me piece them together. So thank mm. you. Um, and she's not, we don't know her yet. Uh, like she's we, not somebody who was in black Panther before. She's she, just, no, no, Milaje, she's, that. she's been in, she's been in black Panther before she, she was um, in, uh, she was in civil war. She was, uh, she was, she was when widow goes to find uh, T'Challa, she gets in front uh, of him and goes, move or I will move you. That's the same uh, Dora Milaje. Really? Oh, okay. I always, for, for some reason in my head, I always thought that that was Okoye who says that. No, 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 no. Okoye, we don't see till, I think we don't see her till Black Panther, but I'm trying Ooh. to, I'm trying to think, but yeah, no, it's the, uh, it's the other door of Malaje. It's, um, it's one of the personal guards, uh, for sure. Uh, but she's the other one. Yeah. And we see her in civil war. She wears the thin black dress and, uh-huh. uh, and, and yeah, she, <laughs> They're walking to the car and she's and widows in front of the car and she's like, move or I will move you. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I like that. And now that has me curious, like, obviously we're going to see her next week. Um, and obviously stuff's going down in Wakanda mm-hmm. uh, because we know, unfortunately, T'Challa isn't going to be around anymore. So they're going to have to deal with that you know what if she you know starts talking about that like t'challa's not feeling well or you know like what if she gives us something that kind of moves the plot because he's not in black panther 2 so Mm -hmm. how do they kind of ease us into that and this might be it we might start to see the first signs of them setting the stage for part two 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's possible, dude. Um, I mean, huh? I I definitely feel they could expand on it. They could, but it's 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 all about. Oh man, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, no, you're you're coming out with the good ones today, <laughs> huh? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I can't figure out a way around it right now. Yeah, I, I mean, like I, know... I think you're on to something. I think you're on to something. See, Feige, call me. Uh, <laughs> I've, I, I know that they, they have beef with Zemo because he caused the death of T'Chaka. That makes perfect sense. Uh, so, like, the fact, that tells us a lot, too, because you would think in this situation, if the guy who killed T'Chaka is running loose again, King T'Challa is going to come sort stuff out. Yeah. So, obviously, we can't have him, unfortunately. So... What excuse in story are they going to give for why he's not here? And is that excuse going to set the stage for why we're not going to see him anymore? Yeah, no, true, true. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where this is going, man, but I love where it is going and I'm here for the ride. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. It's you're on to, you're definitely onto something. I, I'm still banking on Zemo having something to do with the power brokers and the serum because he does look to create Virus X. Um, in the comics, that's what he's known for, is, is he created kind of like an anti-Captain America super soldier virus and like it kills a lot of people. Uh, but it ends up, he gets up, end up getting infected, but he figures out a way to solve his problem and he essentially becomes the anti-Captain America. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see if that's going to play out, but yeah, I don't know. I think I definitely think you're onto something, dude. I think you're onto something. All right, Wakanda forever. I guess we'll see next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wakanda forever. I uh, but well, I I mean, you know, I love that the fact that these are weekly episodes, but I also hate the fact that these are weekly episodes. I know. <laughs> it was nice to see. I know. It, it was really nice to see though that this was the longest Disney plus Marvel episode we've had of it, like longer than any WandaVision, mm -hmm. the longest of these three so far. So like when I saw that runtime was in the 50 minute mark, I was like, we're in it for a, a big, nice. L and the, the crazy thing is at the end of this episode, like so much went on and the stage was set for so many more things to follow that I don't know about you, Ryan, but I find myself thinking are three episodes enough to finish this story. Yes, but if they're if I, I think they're as a fan. No, they're never enough. I mean, I know, I give know. me as many scenes as to, until I'm like Lord of the Rings sick of it. But but at the same time, yes, I think they are enough because if each if each episode is essentially forty to fifty minutes long, they have a mm -hmm. lot of storytelling, and uh, I think they're 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 giving you just enough. And I think the key is again the key is focus on a specific narrative, which is about the super soldier serum and, and giving it to the wrong hands. And, 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 and those hands all believe that like, they all have seem to have different perspective on the world and cap had the best perspective. Um, so who's going to take the mantle properly. And obviously we know it's Falcon. We just need to know how, how he gets there. And that's the narrative. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's. I, we'll see where it goes. Uh, but but what's going to happen is I, I agree with you. I think they're going to plant some seeds and, and expand further into maybe Wakanda and what's going on there. Because the I shield was so. made by the shield was made technically by Wakandans, right? Exactly. Maybe they give them a new one too. Who knows? And I think that planting seeds is something that the villains have been doing too. Because I just feel like because we know this serum came from bad hands you know this mm. wasn't erskine this wasn't a good man who <laughs> made this serum. this was this was some shady folks yeah so i feel like you know we talk about sharon carter being a sleeper agent um i feel like what if everybody with this serum in them has something in them like an order 66 kind of thing you know all zemo has to do is this and then all of a sudden u.s agent and like flag smasher and all her friends are just like mm. must kill america like there's there's so much that could go wrong with all these people who have the strength. And we saw Carly already kind of losing control a bit too. Now it could be because she lost that woman, that woman died who was had some connection with her. Uh, but she blew up that building with people in it. Is this the same 
sort of loss of control that U.S. agent exhibited? Or is this just more of a personal, like, I'm getting revenge? Mm-hmm. Don't know. Don't know. It's too good, man. It's too good. But yes. at this point, I, I think at this point, it's it's right to question everything and everyone might have ulterior motives. I, I think Zemo is obviously up to something. Like it's it, obviously he's not doing this out of the good of his heart. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. No, let's let's, no, let, let's, let's let's be frank here. And I like how they they showed something in this episode that you know probably happens a lot in these stories, and we kind of take it for granted. Like especially growing up with the cartoons and stuff. Like you know, Spider Man would beat up the Rhino, and then the Rhino would get arrested, and then three episodes later, the Rhino's back. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, he clearly escaped from prison. And they show us a supervillain escaping from prison. And I think it's the first time, I could be wrong, that the MCU has given us that. And it's... No. Mm -mm. No? Who, Iron who Man 2. Can? Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2. You're right. Yeah. But it's it's rightfully frightening. Because, you know, you imagine somebody like, like Scorpion or whatever escaping from a prison. That's going to be scary. Uh, it's not going to be like in the cartoon where they're just like da -da -da, and they they jump out a window. It, it's there's more to it than that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, jig. yeah, no, it's uh, it's it, you're right. I mean, this is this is I think the first time how scary it is, and I love that. Uh, I love that Sam when when Winter Soldier's telling the story is just like, why are you being so casual about this? Like, <laughs> like, but it's but it does. I definitely love. You, what you're saying though it definitely sets a tone of how scary this villain is now that he's loose and mm. i i think what they're playing up this time is is like and i think the the door melage really sets the tone of like no this guy needs to be locked up like something is wrong so yeah who knows man like yeah who knows like especially with this whole un thing like he but uh, Zemo did say, though, that the father's death was unfortunate, as if he didn't want that to happen. Um, but but it sounds like it was kind of a means to an end. Right. So. Right. Like just an unfortunate casualty. But, you know, the act, the the act needed to happen. So I don't know. I again, Zemo, there's. Zemo's motive is pretty is still pretty unknown. Even in Civil War, we knew he wanted to dis dissemble the Avengers, but we still don't know. Like we we know that it, revenge is a motive, but I don't think it's that simple. There has to be there has to be an end game to this. Ah, uh, Doctor Strange knows what it is. He's seen all the possible outcomes. Fourteen million six hundred yeah. one. Yeah. Wow. That that's impressive. You memorized that number. Are you one of those guys who saw Endgame like nine hundred times in the theater, like those Guinness World Record people? I'm pretty sure I got the number wrong. Um, I'm I know I got I know I got probably half of it right. Like the I got the beginning and the end right, but the middle is probably something else. Anyway, um, yes, I probably watched Endgame more times than I like to count. Um, but uh, I would also say I'm one of those people too that sometimes I'll I'll watch a scene or two from the movie while like while i'm on okay. break for work and then i'll just i'll just you know forget about it but yeah full sit-throughs i've definitely done more times than i can count well like those guys they they just floor me those guys who, who you hear about like that one dude who watched captain marvel like a hundred and something times in theaters yeah and you know okay he gets in guinness but i i can't help but sit there and think how much money do you have to do? <laughs> like th movie tickets are not cheap. Mm -hmm. Most people, I know I'm weird. I don't eat in movie theaters, but most people seem to. That's I do. even I less. I love eating cheap. the popcorn, man. Oh, so right. Good. That's what normal people do. Apparently they get popcorn in a movie there. So I'm assuming that that is what this guy is doing. Like, where's that money coming from? He's like, oh, I got 20 grand to spare. I guess I'll go see Captain Marvel 180 times. Like what? I'm, I'm baffled by that. I'm just baffled. It's, it's one of those things where uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you just I think that person may not have any financial commitments and therefore their savings mm -hmm. just decide to go right into these things. Right. Like for me, for me, what I did was when I bought my first movie, I'd buy the combo, which would get me a free movie the next time. And then I just buy the combo. Ah. And get me a free movie. But they stopped doing that. So and I haven't been to a movie theater since I'm going to confidently say Baby Driver. but. 
Unless wow. you want to count the drive-in, but I feel like that's the last time I was in a movie theater. Unless there was another movie, I'm not thinking. Are you see- Wait, no, Baby Driver was long before, like Far From Home. There's was no it? way that came out after Far From Home. There's no well, way. Well, no, def- would- in terms of Marvel movies, Far From Home was definitely the last one I've seen in the yeah. movie theater. I don't know. I don't know. Last thing I saw was Onward, the Pixar movie. Ooh. Where everybody's a troll. That was uh, a good movie, though. It- yeah, it was all right. It was it was about a year ago exactly almost. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss it. If, if you're listening out there and you are one of those people who watched Captain Marvel 118 times in theaters, um, if you want to throw some of that financial help our way on our Patreon page, we would love that a lot. You can go to <laughs> patreon.com slash podcast and uh, join our Patreon, folks, and you get exclusive episodes. You get to hear me talking about the Star Wars. I just put out a really cool Patreon-exclusive Star Wars video where I think, Ryan, uh, you've seen Rebels, right? The cartoon? Oh, of course. In this video, I am pretty sure I cracked the code of the Bendu and the Loth Wolves and what the deal is with them. Because they are very mysterious beings. Mm-hmm. I think I solved it. Uh, and if the Patre- if you want to find out what's in that video, you join our Patreon and you can watch it right now. Well, if that formula, if that formula has been applied to this the story of where this this show might go, then I definitely think you guys should go and check it out. Ah, here's hoping. Mm. Oh boy. Um. So I have one last question for you, unless because uh, that's all from my notes. Oh yep. no, there was one more thing. Yeah. Uh, there's it was a little background thing mm. that I thought was interesting. Oh, first of all, we see Baron Zemo dance in a club, which I never thought we would yep. see. Just a little shot of like two seconds going like that. It's like, wow, this is weird. Um, when we're um, when we cut to there's a scene in Lithuania between um, Carly and her her buddy, yeah. whose name I don't know. Behind them, there's a big. It looks like an embassy, a big fancy building, beautiful scenery in all these episodes. And there's a gate in that building, and on that gate, right, there's a sign, and I'm sure it means something in Europe regards to traffic. But this sign was literally the X-Men logo in blue and red. It is a blue circle with the red X inside another circle. I now, did if not you're, see that. Um, I didn't catch yeah, it. It's, it's just hiding there. It's just hiding there on a gate. If you're from Europe and you're right now you're listening and you're like, uh, dummy, that means yield to traffic or whatever. Because mm-hmm. I'm sure it's just something European that they had used for a sign that we don't have here. So, but um, it was kind of interesting to see that there in the background. And I don't, I, I feel like we're just being trolled. I don't think it means anything, but uh, no, you know yeah. what though? It could, it could be, it could be that little nugget that it's like, it's, it couldn't, it probably doesn't mean anything in that story, but it could be that little nugget of like, don't worry, X-Men are coming. Like it was the same yeah. with the fantastic four building. Um, like they, they planted those seeds in there and then like, the merger as the merger was happening, they planted those seeds in there with like one, two, three, can't wait to show you what comes next. Um, right. but I think, yeah. And then, and then Feige said, don't like fantastic four are coming. Um, and so, yeah, I think it might be that, that sign that like literally a sign that it's, it's coming just to give us time. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, it was a nice little Easter egg. Um, so if you don't have any more notes, We'll close off with one question I have for you. Yes. Okay. So Hit this me. is an easy question because this is just purely based on your own sort of speculation and your knowledge of what all these characters get up to in the comics. So we know that in She-Hulk, we're going to get Abomination. You know, he's coming back. You know, we've seen, um, what's his face there? Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. been back. You know, he's a thing. Mm-hmm. So... In this episode, I was reminded when they go down into that really cool um, container and they go down to the lab and they meet that crazy dude, he gave off vibes that reminded me a lot of Dr. Samuel Stearns. So I wanted to ask you, because we know that, you know, Ross and Abomination are all still part of this world, what do you think Stearns is up to right now? Ooh, uh, he would be refining the gamma thing. So he would be working mm-hmm. on something gamma related. Um, I think what he would be doing, I think he, if he is existing in the MCU right now, he might be working with 
he might be working with Ross to create the Red Hulk, if that's true. I, I would I would not be surprised if I was to create an MCU narrative. I think that's the good way to twist the knife. Um, and, and, you know, because Ross wants the Hulk because he's a product of the United States. So mm -hmm. if 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 Banner worked with Stearns, then who would stop Ross from going to Stearns next and being like, well, you've dissected the Hulk. Can you make another one? Oh, uh, I. I hope so. Give it to me. Give me Red Hulk. <laughs> give me Red She Hulk. Give yeah. me Blue Abomination. Give me all of them. I want them. Well, they're all playing at gods, right? Like I love that. I love the idea of what the scientist said in this one. He's like, "Oh yes, I, I, you know, I, I'm a god now, and all this stuff." And and that's the same thing the Red Skull said. And there was a Red Skull dropped in the, in the, earlier in the episode, but that same thing Red Skull Red Skull said in the first movie, which is, "You could have the power of the gods." But you wear you wear a flag on your chest and play a game of nations, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's I mean, if Stearns, I, I think Stearns, if he had some something to do with this, is I think he would be he would be finding a way to uh, to make monsters of his own and 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 realize that that it's it's about evolution and and you know humans are the experiments to progress evolution and become the best and but the leader needs to lead them because that's what he does right he's the most intelligent person in the world yes i think that uh, the cartoon said it best he's like uh the hulk the hulk this is avengers host Spider heroes once again great show ever best show ever um uh the leader says to the hulk he's just like i just wanted to create a world in my image and what he does what he did was he created what he called a gamma dome and the gamma dome went all around the like almost all around the world and everyone who got caught inside the dome turned into a gamma fueled monster. So everyone turned into like a Hulk of, of some kind, but they're all not the Hulk. They're all like weird yeah. off versions. So yeah, in answer to, in summary, in answer to your question, that's what I think Stearns is up to. I feel like you could play a hell of a game of baseball inside a gamma dome. <laughs> the home runs every hit. Oh, speaking of baseball and baseball cards, I sent you a trade today on the Topps Marvel app. Ooh, yeah, we got trade. And anybody out there listening who has the Topps Marvel app, you can uh, let me trade with us and chat with us on the thing there. You can find me on that app at Fantasia1987. And then uh, you can also find me on uh, Twitter sometimes and Instagram and YouTube as Andrew Fantasia. And Ryan, where can the good people find you? Ooh, I love it. Uh, yes. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. And you can find me on Twitter at Crusader Online. And you want to check us out on there because James Gunn liked our post. <laughs> yes, he did. Which means, as we all know, Mephisto's confirmed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Mm -hmm. That's clearly what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent. Wow. All right. This was a, a fun episode. Uh, of Infinity Rewatch and a fun episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Three left. We're halfway there already. Oh, oh, halfway there. Oh, oh, living on a prayer. <laughs> living on a prayer. I love it. All right, guys. <laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you, Fantasia. Thank you, sir. And as always, all of you have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.